Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in this video, we are checking out the Blue Yeti EB55. It is their little 537 watt hour power bank. We're gonna be doing a bit of an unboxing, checking out everything that comes with the kit. And then we're gonna be doing a bit of an overview of the features that it comes with. And then of course, doing some live testing to see what devices this guy can run. But without further ado, let's get started. Power pack. All our cables, paperwork, and here is the unit itself. Right, so here it is. Here, here is the EB55. This is a perfect little compact device that is ideal for small trips away or running those smaller devices. It's nice and compact in size, this guy. It, it comes in at about 28 centimeters in length. It's about 20 centimeters in height, and it's about 20 centimeters deep. And it only weighs about seven and a half kilos. It's got a nice little carry handle on top, so carrying the thing around is nice and easy as well. Now this little guy has a storage capacity of about 537 watt hours. Now it does use the LifePo 4 lithium batteries and they're, they're, they're the ones that are gonna get you a whole bunch more capacity in cycles. Now we'll check out some of the features that it has before we head over and do a few capacity tests with it. I think this guy is gonna be ideal for the camper or the day tripper because it is so compact and nice and easy to use. It does have a full built-in light here on the back, so that's perfect if you're in your tent, for example, or you want some sort of lighting around the campsite. That's a really cool feature to have. And then on the top here, you actually have a wireless charger, and that is a pretty cool feature. It's a 15 watter as well, so a little bit more powerful than some of the uh, some of the earlier versions. So it lets you stick your phone on top there, and boom, you're charging your phone. So that's pretty cool. Now, as far as all the other options you've got, this is what I reckon makes this guy the perfect little camping unit. And the reason why I say that is there is stacks and stacks of options to both charge your devices for power out, but then also for power in. So let's run through what options that you get. So how this guy works, everything's all on the front. We do have some vents on either side, and these guys are designed to just suck that air through the system to keep everything nice and cool. From the front here to turn it on, it is as simple as just pressing our little button here. You do have a really nice display in there that gives you a bit of a view of your overall battery percentage and how much capacity you have left. And then on the top, we have our input and then our output there on the bottom. So pretty cool that it's got that built-in reading. Now, as far as power out goes, we've got a whole bunch of options. You can switch these independently so we can turn those on and or off. On the side here from a DC perspective, really cool to see we have a USB-C with a full 100 watt output. Why is that important? If you're planning on running laptops or anything like that, you're gonna need the extra wattage output and 100 watts is gonna run practically any of the newer laptops out there that can take USB-C. So that is really cool that you can use that for that kind of thing. Then we have a whole bunch of USB ports here. You can see we have a bunch of our three amp versions here as USB A's as well. So there's four of those as well as our USB C. And then moving across to our AC, this has a 700 watt pure sine wave inverter built in. So that's pretty cool to have all that built in. Then on the side here as well, we've got a few other DC outlets. We have one of these or two of these little plugs, sorry. These are a DC 5521 plug. A little bit unusual, we don't sort of tend to use these a whole lot in Australia, but you've got that option there as well for various devices. And then on the top, you've got one of the standard cigarette light up plugs there. They're good for up to 10 amps. And then from a power input perspective, we've got a few different options. And it's all accessed in through our weatherproof covered section here at the top. And we've got our DC input. This has a built-in MPPT charger which is good for between that 12 and 28 volts and up to eight amps on a solar panel. So you can run a smaller solar panel on this guy, no worries at all. Without a regulator, it's got one of those built in. So it'll charge the unit straight from the panels, which is pretty cool. And then we've got our adapter and you can get up to 10 amps from the wall socket. How they work is you have one of these guys, one of the power bricks. And then from a couple of other options, we have our car charger. So this guy is once again good up to about eight amps. So while you're driving around in your vehicle, while you're out camping, what have you, you can charge this guy straight from your cigarette lighter plug, 
straight in once again to a yellow plug in here and that'll start charging your unit as well. Then the other way you can do it is directly from solar panels separately as well. And that's what these guys are like we mentioned there before. You have some dedicated power leads ready to go if you want to plug straight into a standard solar panel connection. So that's a bit of an overview of the ways we can get power out of the unit and a couple of different ways that we can get the power back into it. I reckon from here, let's get a few devices around and let's give this guy a test. So we've got to make sure the unit is all turned on there. We can see we are at 100%, so we're good to go there. We'll start with some DC type stuff, stuff you may have on a day trip or a little camping and that kind of thing, phone chargers, laptop chargers, and camera batteries, that sort of jazz. Then I reckon we step the thing up with a, a bit of a coffee frother, you know, coffee, very important. Well, it is to this guy. Um, then let's run a little fridge, see how it handles there and how long you'd be able to run one of those type 45, 50 liter fridges. Then I reckon let's do something that it's entirely not designed for, which is running, running an angle grinder. So without further ado, let's plug in some things and see how it performs. So if we plug it in to our, our charger here, we can see that on the top there, yep, boom, we're actually charging. And then if we turn our screen on here, we can see our wattage output there. So that's pretty cool that it gives you a live display on exactly how much you're using. So we're, we're drawing seven watts to charge the old phone there. So we've got our camera batteries, phone charging. We're drawing about the 15 watts there. I reckon let's get this guy going as well. So we've got our laptop here. I do have it turned on. So we can see there we're on. From here, let's, let's get this guy going. Let's plug her in. This is a straight DC charger. Where's, there's our light. We can see what happens here. We're at 24 watts. I don't know. I feel like that's not heaps. I reckon let's also turn on our fridge. We've got our DC version of the fridge. I reckon let's plug the fridge in as well on DC. So give me a sec. I'll get the fridge all plugged in and we'll see what kind of difference that makes. So we're all connected here for the fridge. We only have the one output, so I can't run both of these. We could, of course, get a little adapter, but for the moment, let's disconnect our laptop. Let's plug in our fridge. You heard the little beep there. We should see a bit of a spike here. We're up to 30, 50, about that 60 watt mark for this guy here. This is uh, Brass Monkey 45, a little uh, 45 liter, so perfect for sort of a, a day or two sort of trip, that kind of thing. So there we go, we're drawing 60 watts, no problem at all. All right, so let's step it up a notch. Say we've got all our things charging, we've got our phones charging, we've got our batteries charging, we're running our fridge and we're on a camp and of course, we want a coffee. Maybe you want a bit of a cappuccino, that kind of thing. We've got our milk frother here. Let's plug it into AC and get that going at the same time. So to do that, we just plug it into our port, we turn it on. This guy is 500 watts, so it's perfect for a device like that. You can see there on the screen, 500 watts. So that's pretty much spot on. We're all plugged in. Let's get our little screen display up here so we can see we're drawing 60 there with the fridge. There we go, our light is on, we are frothing. And then we can see here, well, there you go. It's actually drawing about spot on. So we're pulling 530 odd watts out now between all of our charging our milk frother and our fridge handling it no problems at all so that is that's great that is pretty cool so there we go we can see we're drawing about that 50 to sort of 60 mark with the laptop charging on ac and both of our devices over there it's going to depend on whether this guy is a true 800 watts now this guy will handle the startup no worries that's that startup current of 1400 watts no problem at all it's whether then it can sustain it so i reckon well, let's make sure the screen stays on and let's see what we get. There we go. If you want to power your angle grinder with a little battery bank, you totally can. But there you go, that is a quick look at the Blue Yeti EB55. This guy is perfect if you're after a more economical and smaller little power station. But let me know what you think. Is this something you think you'd be interested in? I will make sure I link in the video description down below where you can pick one of these up for yourself. But let me know in the comments, is this something you think is enough power? What kind of application would you use this for? 
I'm kind of thinking it's for that sort of overnight or day trip barbecue, that kind of jazz. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for this video. If you want to see more power bank reviews, let me know what you'd like me to review next. And if there's something else that you've got your eye on, but you're not sure you want to do a bit of a video show me how watch before you buy type scenario, let me know in the comments down below and I'll see what I can do. Of course, a massive thank you to the video show me how patrons, your extra support guys as always, truly appreciated. But other than that guys, as always, I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys.